Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Celestial Journey. So today, it's been a little bit since we've done kind of an off-rails type episode and that's what we're going to be doing today is another sort of like non-pack based progression type episode where we work on some between land stuff and some building on camera, that sort of thing. Um, and we're going to be working on the between lands farm. It's about time that we get that done. And it's kind of important that we get it done now um, because I have, I spent, the other day I spent 12 hours working on the prison just on the sales of the, of the dungeon, you know, um, spent 12 hours because there are 60 sales in that dungeon and only two of them were done. <laughs> so I spent a really long time working on those, um, and getting those knocked out and, I'm kind of at a point now where I need bulb cap mushrooms so I can start doing the decorating, kind of the clutter area through the prison. Hopefully get it done before the world upload, but we'll see because I still have one whole wall section of the prison to do, which really won't take too long once I get rolling on it, but I will also want to get the world upload for you guys in a timely manner. So probably this episode and then one more normal progression episode, and then it'll be world upload time and base tour time. Uh, I did want to show you this though. I'm um, over here. This thing is still kicking out obsidian. Like nobody's business. We have two stack, uh, two stacks and 23 of quadruple compressed obsidian. And basically, what I've got going on here, um, you can see an output node here. This is set to priority one, um, which is a higher priority than our drawer system, which is zero, which means it takes secondary um, effect after the drawers are filled. Um, is what that means. So. Um, basically when you're dealing with nodes and priorities, um, your lowest priorities are going to go first and then it's going to, um, they're going to go further back the higher the priority goes. Um, which to me makes sense. I know some people that are really used to item conduits may not make as much sense. To me it makes more sense, but, um, because it's kind of like that first place, second place, third place, in my head, you know, like, it's more important the lower the number, like, get the items there as quickly as possible. Um, but if we pop back here, um, you can see that I did upgrade this for an RF tools timer, um, and it's set to a delay of five at the moment, which is low enough that I can just come out positive on blood, like, life essence. I did throw a few more zombies into our, um, our altar setup, which, um, I don't know if I mentioned a while back I had to change it over from witches because my witches weren't drinking their potions sometimes and they were getting themselves killed off. So I did change it over for graveyard soil, which has worked perfectly. Um, a little bit expensive. Um, I just did two little strips of graveyard soil down there uh, to keep costs down. But um, Zombies are packed up in there really good. <laughs> really, really tight. So... Um, but yeah, so anyways, that's kicking away. Um, I did get to thinking, uh, right now I'm reading off of Compressed Obsidian because Compressed Obsidian is not going to back up until Quadruple Obsidian, Triple Obsidian, Double Obsidian, and then um, Compressed Obsidian. And Double double Compressed has to back up basically 32 stacks, right? So I did go ahead and set that up to go ahead and start compacting Quadruple Compressed Obsidian. Um, I did get to thinking, though, I am still going to need to read off of this one, which I'm not currently. Um, the reason being is, once all this backs up, it's going to be a while, so it's no rush. But, once all of this backs up, then, in the event that my compressed obsidian is backed up, but I use regular obsidian, I need it to say, okay, well, I need to make more regular obsidian now. Um, for, you know, making dark steel, things like that. Because we're probably going to be using a lot more regular obsidian, realistically, than quadruple obsidian for a long time. So, um, But anyways, let's go ahead and get into what we're going to be working on today, which is between lands farming. And by farming, I don't mean farming white pear seeds. I don't mean farming a spectra seeds. I mean farming plants. Because I need bulb capped mushrooms. Um, for the prison, but also just for general lighting. And I am starting to get low on bulb cap mushrooms. Um, I think this is actually my last one at the moment. Um, so what I've done, I've set this little area up here because we need to farm, first and foremost, we need to farm compost, which is gonna make up the backbone of our farming 
um, of course, with Between Lands stuff. And we're actually going to use this little area over here as kind of our Between Lands farm, just kind of opposite the Alchemy Guild. Plus, I'm right underneath the ocean right here, and I need to do something that's not super tall um, because I'm actually going to bring this over and kind of arch it. And we're just going to have this little nook here that's for Between Lands farming, I think. Even though I will say there's going to be parts of the ocean that we're just going to have to let run, build the roof, and then cover over in the ocean water. Um, it should be far enough away from our base that it's not going to matter, but I can always throw a layer of sand over it if I need to. But the thing is, I mean, we're already at the ocean, and after the world download, of course, I mentioned what we're going to be working on is actually pushing all this back and building the city proper. So this has got to go. It's got to get pushed back. Um, I did get a bit of automation done, a little bit of automation done. Um, blaze powder is automated, and uh, I did actually craft a little bit too much blaze powder, but um, it is automated. And I got energetic alloy automated, or energetic alloy blocks automated, and just some little things like that. Um, so those are those are in place. But anyways, what we're going to be doing, we are going to be growing swamp reed. And <clears throat> actually had sticky pistons here. Um, I don't think I'm going to stay with... I mean, I'm probably going to run them, I guess, as sticky pistons since I've already got these. But I don't think I'm going to... Well, I'll tell you what, though. Originally, I was thinking about doing an observer. And then I went to my test world and I tested with the observer. The big problem with the observer is I would have to use like a repeater or something to extend the signal so that the sticky pistons would correctly pull their blocks back in um, because of the way that sticky pistons work with quick redstone signals, um, they kind of cause an issue, right? And originally my plan was to use um, observers to do it, but then I tested it in my test world and I was like, okay, I don't like this because then I got to put repeaters to extend the signal so they'll actually pull their blocks back. Um, I think slime blocks would work, but not in this case where we've got a bunch of like lined up blocks. Um, obs observers are kind of a newer thing that, like, since I did vanilla redstone, they're kind of a newer thing, so I'm, I'm always unsure about them, but, um, but I think a timer is a long enough signal, it should pull it back. Yes, it does. Okay, that's great. Um, so yeah, we're just going to use a timer for this system, and I think it's going to work better for us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run out, um, right here. I'm just going to run out our sticky pistons like that. And then what we'll do is I'm going to need to get some redstone real quick. And we're going to come right back here. There's a chance I might bust into ocean here. I don't know. Okay, and then what we'll do, we'll just run out, um, let's say, to there. Let's just run out our redstone, and I'm going to go ahead, <laughs> see I told you, my boat's into ocean here, a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put lights in here, in a few spots, and just so it kind of, uh, redstone is laggy mainly I think whenever you don't have lights and that's because of light updates in Minecraft are like super laggy so try to avoid those whenever we can and we'll just put uh, some light sources so that it's high enough light that it doesn't update the lighting whenever the redstone ticks um, and then we're gonna put in our timer right here so when this activates it's gonna activate all the pistons there we go. And we're going to turn this up. Um, I'm going to say uh, 2400. So every two minutes run, uh, I think that's going to be good for us. And then what we're going to do, let's go ahead and open. Um, must be, oh, it's like a cavern down here. Okay. Well, anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to run out swamp dirt. go and then let me grab I think I'm gonna use just regular gritty looking dendrothus for this um, 
because I'm actually a fan personally. And then let's go ahead. I'm just kind of, this is our, our glass basically um, for this setup. And then I'm going to run out um, pit stone or uh, between stone down here. Just to kind of frame it in. Okay. And then I don't think, unless I need to change the timer, we won't need to get back there anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide that away real quick. And we'll just dig this out. Running on. I've been really scared working over here. Um, I don't know why, but digging under the ocean always bothers me. I think it's because it washes away torches and things like that. And so I have to like relight everything, uh, which is just always basically frustrating. Um, so I've been like, ooh, I don't want to work over here. But I think if we just close this up, kind of, um, I think it will work out for what I had planned. And then we'll have like that kind of little plant um, cubby type area over there, which I think will work out good for us. Uh, let me go ahead and just grab this. Of course, I'd pick a place to build that's got like the ocean right there. I should have picked like a really tall mountain range. And I think it would have worked better for the build, but you know, it's whatever. Okay, and then down here, I'm going to want some mud, I think. No, I don't want mud. Never mind. I wanted mud. No, I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking or what I'm talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just do some swamp dirt in here. And then, of course, this right here will be swamp dirt. And then we'll put some grass down and let it spread. Just kind of where the cave wall section's giving way to dirt. Uh, now, realistically, I don't think plants would grow all that well here, but... Because of all the stone probably underneath that dirt, but um, all right. So then, what we're going to do? Let's go ahead and put in our swamp reeds. Now these can be placed. Well, they can't be placed there, um, but if you have water next to them, they will grow like sugar cane. So just bear that in mind. However, they do grow faster when they're fully submerged in water. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Swamp kelp is the same way. Swamp kelp will grow faster also when submerged in water. Then what we're going to do is... Yeah, no, you're running. Let's go ahead and build this out. Let me actually make a little area. Like right up there so that I can actually get up here. Now let's go ahead and put out some more dendrothus. I've got to go dendrothus farming here soon. Whoops. Okay. Oh. We're not even really able to see out of that. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking maybe I don't like the the gritty dentrithis for this. I mean I could do like alf glass, which would work too. Let me try Let me try smelting this and just see if I like it. And then if I do, then I will keep it with the polished dentrothist. But if I don't use it here, I'll use it somewhere, I'm sure. So I'm going to go ahead and get 20 of it for the time being. And the only thing is it is going to break all of our water each time that it breaks the uh, swamp reed. But I don't think it's going to be an issue for us um, because I believe it will grow in water that's flowing down. Um, oh, and wait, I need to push that. Yeah, I need to push those sticky pistons back by one, actually. My bad. Let me go ahead and just break those off. And see, I'm already having to get back in here. Sticky pistons will actually go right here. Because I wanted them totally hidden behind the between stone. Just because it'll make everything look better. So we'll do that. And then... So just in case water happens to flow down, because it's going to right here. Okay, yeah, so we'll just set it up here then. That's the issue. Let's go ahead and Rod of Shifting Crust. Just change this over real quick. 
And yeah, I think this will work. I think this will work out good for us. Now this is between lands. We'll try to detect like whenever there's a liquid, like an area that it could flow to. If I do that, it'll close that off. So that will work. More dendrophis down here. I'd love to be able to finish out the smith before the world upload, but I don't know if I'll have the time. The prison, but it'll be so nice once the prison's just done and I don't have to worry about it anymore. It'll be so nice. Um, and I have been thinking, I think I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, I'm playing around with the idea of running shaders for the base tour. Okay, so now what I want to do, which I didn't bring any extra water with me, so let me just, um, well, technically I could do it here. What we're going to do, it will break that, but that's okay. I'm going to build us out some flowing swamp water over here, which should permit the growth of this, I believe. So if we give it a little bit of time, this is going to take a little while um, before we're getting to grow. It's not, you know, it's kind of like sugarcane. It doesn't grow the fastest in the world, but um, we should have some growth start coming through. So let's grab a hopper hawk and let's get um, let's get ourselves a weedwood chest. And I'm thinking let's see. I'm really hoping that this will grow like this. If we put this over here in the hopper hawk setting here. Still can't really see in there. I may have to put some lamps in there, perhaps. Um, let's see. Let's find us a good lamp. All right, let's go ahead and get some Arlamite lamps. There we go. And I think we'll just toss these in there. And I think it'll make it look pretty good. So let me just open... this back up let's see we'll place one in right here and then uh, well actually two will be good I forgot I didn't need a number for this normally my farms are odd numbers so okay uh, still a little bit hard to see in there but uh, actually I'll tell you what we're gonna do it like this um, and the reason being, of course, swamp reeds can grow up into the air above the water as well. Um, it's been really slow. I've let this set for a little bit, but it's still extremely slow. They do grow a little bit faster when they're underwater, not by much. I don't remember exactly how much, um, but they do grow a little bit faster when they're underwater. Um, but I think what we're going to do, I think I'm going to do it like this. What I'll probably do is do like a glass, um, kind of like a glass wall uh, sort of thing not a full block size but maybe like four bit size with like little tiles um, and just kind of build this little section here instead of it having like a full wall that's right here um, I think that's what I'm going to do I think um, but I'll tell you what we're going to do right now let's get ourselves um, some stuff to make growth accelerators real quick and that way our uh, little farm area is a lot more visible as well um, but let's go ahead, let's get 64 stone, let's get uh, a bunch of diamonds, and, oh, my Ethereum's not actually plugged up to my Corporea system at the moment. Alright, let's go ahead and just compact out this. go and there is a bunch of growth accelerators now I still got blocks of oh I ran out of stone okay well I think um, well I'll tell you what I want four more so let me go ahead there we go we're gonna do two growth accelerators for each one I think this should affect our between lands crops um, it's funny that I'm using growth accelerators for our decorative blocks and not our um, like resource crops or anything like that. Of course, we don't have many resource crops at the moment. But, um, and then what we're going to do, 
I did move the hopper hawk over here so that it could hit all these within range. Um, but let's go ahead. Let's pop underneath the swamp dart here. Okay. And we're just going to go... We're just going to go down through here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then back through like that. I'm just going to light this up down here a little bit, and hopefully that's going to boost our speed. Is what I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. And let me go ahead and grab an item frame. And, um, well, I'm going to wait on that until we're done building this. Because right now it's kind of convenient having the hopper hawk available to kind of pick everything up for us. But, uh... I don't know, I feel like we already need a bigger farm for this. Okay, I'm going to let that sit and run for a little bit, and we'll see what happens. Um, but my, what I want to happen, I really don't know if this is going to be fast enough. I mean, the thing is, it probably will be because it's something that's going to run passive that I'm not going to be draining on all that often. Uh, I mean, I need a lot of bulb cap mushrooms at the moment. So it's one of those things I'm going to be waiting on at the initial stage. But I don't know if I want a really big farm for compost or just this 10 blocks. Call it a day kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know. But what I want to do is I want to set up... Um, I'm just going to bring this dirt over like this real quick. And we're going to set up a composter right here. And then if you left click these, they will open. Um, but let's see. I want to see if item conduits work with them. I believe it will. So if we set this to insert, extract. Um, nodes is actually probably what we're going to be using, but I'm just curious. If item conduits work, then node should. But if we throw that into there, it will not pump out into these. Um, what if we do it through the top? No, it will not. Okay. Mechanical user m might have to be the way. Actually, I don't know if it's the us real quick. Extract. Insert. I don't think we've ever automated the compost bin, but if it's open, okay, it still won't. Okay. Because normally what you do is you'd like right click it in there, like so. And then close it, and you're going to see particle effects that start to prime. Um, let's see. I'm thinking we could do it with like a mechanical user combo. Um, and have a timer run, one left clicks to open it, and then one right clicks a few times, and then it left clicks again to close it. Okay, this did finish the compost. We right click and we got one piece of compost. Um, now I've got some more swamp raid. This did grow. Not very fast. I might put more growth accelerators. They don't really grow extremely fast. Um, but I want to try something out of curiosity. Red string container. Ooh, this might work. <laughs> um, let me just do this. This isn't what we're going to do. I'm just curious if this will work for us. Um, extract is always active. Ah, I won't feed in. Okay. I was wondering if there was a way that we could passively have this compost. Um, mechanical user might be the way that we have to do it which isn't really ideal because it's going to look horrendous um 
But we'll cross that bridge here in just a little bit, I think. What I want to do, though, for right now, I do have the compost. This is actually going to last for a while. Um, each piece of compost will allow us to grow a lot of crops on it. Um, so it's not a big deal. Let me get... Let me get some swamp grass. Just so I can get this to start spreading for us. And... Let's go ahead and just put this in places. just kind of we'll just kind of place this out periodically around here and then uh, we'll put one in right here and then and then let me grab some swamp dirt and we're also going to want to get ourselves a purifier as well uh, and to make this five lead wood and three octane Okay, there's our purifier, and I am going to want to set up um, kind of some automatic swamp water harvest a bit later. Um, probably just use dispensers to do that, um, I do believe. And let's go ahead and just... Let's go ahead and just fill this up. And then we're going to throw in some of our swamp dirt. Um, I think eight pieces to start. And then we'll go ahead and just throw in some sulfur. And we'll get this to start purifying. And basically that means um, when you're dealing with, of course, between lands farming, you have a couple things to bear in mind. You have compost, which, of course, is this stuff that we just made. Um, and whenever you grow crops, it's going to slowly eat that compost um, that you put in with your crops. And if your crops run out of compost, they can no longer grow or spread or, you know, whatever the case may be um, for a given um, crop. So what we're going to be doing is just standard plant farming, um, not like crop farming. It's a little bit different. I've covered it in the past and we're going to be covering it here soon in a uh, sort of series spotlight that we're going to be doing um, here very, very soon actually. But um, you also have what's called decay. And what happens is your think about decay as... Um, Let's see how to put it. Compost is kind of like feeding the soil with nutrients so that your stuff can grow. Decay is where you have um, the soil and the plants will, um, I guess, it kind of like player decay and stuff, how they're kind of exposed to the elements of the between lands. Of course, it's going to happen here in the overworld as well in the case of farming, but you kind of have. Um, when dealing with between land stuff, it just slowly kind of decays away, right? And so we want it, we want to keep it from decaying. So we're going to purify it, which is basically going to clean out all the um, the bad stuff that's in the swamp dirt, and it's going to give us this purified uh, version here. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, and so then what we're going to do is we're going to put in our purified swamp dirt. Uh, say right here and let's go ahead and just put swamp dirt around this and grass can spread to this and make purified swamp grass um, so we're going to let it do that um, here so and let's see yeah we'll go ahead and do that um and then what we're going to do, I'm going to need a shovel real quick. And what we're going to do is we're just going to right click our purified swamp dirt. We're going to take our compost and we're just going to right click that in. We got the pure and dirty advancement. And then whenever it comes to standard crop harvesting, uh, the way this works is um, if I was to take our bulb cap mushrooms and I was just place them down on here what's gonna happen is they're gonna slowly spread to other uh, viable locations around there so in this case it'll be swamp dirt swamp grass it's gonna be able to spread over to those um, let me move this stuff out of the way so we'll have to give this a little bit of time right now our compost production is a little bit on the slow side but I think it's gonna be enough that we're still gonna run positive because as you can see, it's not super fast that this spreads. 
Um, now, I'm not sure if growth accelerators would boost it at all. Um, I kind of want to try that real quick. I'm sure something like imaginary time block probably would um, work with it. And so I'm thinking growth accelerators may, but um, I'm not really sure about just growth accelerators. We're going to give a shot. Okay, I added some more growth accelerators up to four beneath all of our swamp reeds. And um, I added a couple more down here. So there's four underneath the bulb cap mushrooms also. Um, and that one actually did just grow. So we're making some progress. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'll need to upgrade this. I could either, realistically, I could make more of these setups around the base even. Or um, if we look, let's see. And that got, uh, yeah, seven. If we look at everything that can be composted, saplings are another thing that we will have coming in um, before too long, like in mass, because we're going to be doing some tree farms here very soon. So we may compost those. Um, and then I guess yellow dotted fungus we could do, which I think we can automate farming and the whole process of farming. Um, it's just going to be very involved in a lot of mechanical users if we do that. I haven't really decided if I want to auto fully automate yet or not. Um, because having to do a little bit of manual stuff as far as farming goes doesn't really bother me personally. I know some people hate having to do anything manual. That's not me. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, I might do at least one setup just for the fun of it because it's something very involved to automate. Um, once we're at a point where it's like really comfortable to make a lot of mechanical users or we have it automated or something like that, um, then we'll probably do that. But uh, let's see, let's come out and we'll go in right here with uh, a little bit more purified swamp dirt. We'll go ahead and open that up and throw in some compost. And um, we'll go ahead and just put this in like that. And we'll just place out our bulb cap mushrooms. Yeah, it looks like we're getting more swamp reed now. Um, I mean, I can make some more growth accelerators because they do stack. It's just each one's not super effective. But if we have a bunch of them... Um, I think this setup could put out enough swamp reed, and it's going to be a lot of them though, to do it that way, because swamp reed just doesn't grow super fast. Um, I don't think there's any growth difference between it and swamp kelp, because um, we could do swamp kelp also, um, but I know the compost amount, like different plants based on, like different plants will produce more compost and take longer or shorter to compost. Swamp reed's not a great one. Um, there's a whole lot better for compost, but most of those are either going to require going out and farming them or actually um, composting the plant. So there's really no benefit to um, switching over to swamp kelp. Um, swamp kelp would require it all to be underwater, though, so uh, there is that. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're going to let that run for a little bit. Like I said, I might add more growth accelerators to this just to speed the whole process up. Um, but honestly, hmm, I don't know with it being something AFK, mainly for our lighting. <sighs> and I mean, technically we could automate the whole like collection of the bulb cap mushrooms, but it would require mechanical users stocked with Simerite shears, um, to really do that. So I don't know. I don't know if we'll do that or not. Probably not, but, um, yeah, let me, let me go make another um, batch of growth accelerators real quick. Okay, so hopefully that will have a big impact as well. Um, and you can tell our compost is lasting a long time. So um, we should be okay on that front. Um, not really sure how much impact the growth accelerators are having on these. I'm going to keep... I'm going to actually... I'll probably leave this one without growth accelerators and this one with the growth accelerator so we can kind of see and test um, you know the difference but uh, then what we can do is we can come over 
uh, just like here. Let me go ahead and pull this up. We'll put in our swamp dirt, you know, purified swamp dirt, and just dig it. And we'll get some more going over here. Yeah, see, I feel like this one, this side grows faster. Um, not by a ton, but by a little bit, it does seem to grow faster. But we'll see. I'll kind of keep an eye on it. Okay. Um, it's been running for a bit. It actually does not seem like the growth accelerators have much impact on the speed of the spread. But it does seem like they do have an impact on the read growth. Um, so what I'm probably going to do... Um, I've just been kind of watching it and seeing how things went, but it doesn't seem like this really matters all that much that we have it in. So, we'll just go ahead and pull that up. Um, if you don't have any more stone, I'll just send it all into storage. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. Let's go ahead and throw that down. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it is spreading pretty quick, especially once I get more of these plots filled out. Um, we'll be able to grow bulb cap mushrooms fairly quickly at that point, um, I do believe. Now, one thing to note is if you take a look here, uh, if we look at composter, you can see that the process time um, is displayed in JEI. Um, I seem to remember it not being displayed in JEI, but maybe it was and I just never realized it or forgot about it. I don't know. But you can see the compost amount for swamp reeds is three. Yeah, you can see I've added two more rows. So right now each plot of Swamp Raid has um, six growth accelerators. So it is it does seem like it's speeding things up a bit. I mean, it's still not super fast. But but yeah, so we are producing a decent amount of bulb cap mushrooms uh, for me to use. So I'm going to go ahead and just convert those. I have them set to be able to convert. That's not default. That's actually one of my added recipes. Um, and that's just because I like storing them. I like this visually more because it looks like bulb cap mushrooms, whereas the other one to me looks like something that would be maybe composted, um, or not composted, but ground up for, well, not really ground up, I guess. I don't know. But bulb cap mushrooms, I use them so much, so I do have a conversion recipe in there for those, um, just because it makes it easier for me to see in drawers and stuff like that, so. Um, but yeah, so we can pop down now, I think. Um, I've got a fair few of them, and down to this area here and we can go ahead and get ourselves yeah there's some stuff up there as you can see that's for safari net storage over there um, I've still got to put in some more I've got some this right here is for extra um, soul vials I have our lurkers in there as well as a few things I haven't slotted yet uh, but you can see here we have spider gas wither skeleton and enderman and basically the left side is for the safari nets, the right side is for soul vials, um, for storing them. And then witch blaze, squid, chicken, blitz, blizz, basals, and cow, villager, pig, guardian, and sheep. Um, then the four different cadillions, because, you know, why not? And then we've got cyclops, scorchers, rototics, whales, <laughs> yeah, whales, um, wildfires, rainbows, wisps, death tones, ender spiders, ender watchers, ender triplets, shulkers, Grows, Dram Crixes, Helmet Crabs, and Jackomans. And then I've got some more. I may have to add more storage. I know it seems like there's a lot of storage here, but I still need to add my Between Lands creatures. Um, I haven't added those up here. Um, the only ones I have captured at the moment are Whites and um, Sludges, but as far as for spawning purposes, um, I do have Lurkers, but those are for our pets. So, um, But yeah, so down here, you can see... We have this little area going on here. And actually, um, yeah, if you look in here, the sails, I'm still going to add some variation to this, um, like break up the blocks and stuff like that. Um, all down through here and here. And I may throw some silt in there, which will may not end up with extra mud bricks, but that's okay um, because of the fact that mud bricks will use them. You know, it's no biggie. I end up with some extras, but I probably will add a little bit of silt in here, but I will also add some sludge um, bits, like the sludgy blocks um, down around here. Oh, and that's right. I closed up my, uh, I had a little staircase that went up there, but uh, I closed it up whenever I built this wall. So 
I can't get up there anymore. Um, but yeah, so up there, there's just a little cleared area. We're going to be working up there before too long because actually our Well of Souls is going to go up there. Um, it's not going to be accessible from the prison here, but it is going to be accessible uh, from this side. So, um, but yeah, so anyways, if we head on through, um, Mob Duplicator is not running at the moment because I actually had a bit of redstone and glowstone built up. So I was like, well, I'll turn that off for now. Um, but let's see, paths are pretty easy. I couldn't remember the name. I don't know if these are craftable. No, they're not. I do not have a lot of those. That's going to be, I think, the biggest thing. I may have to go farm up. I think I've got like 30 or so, but it's not going to be enough to do the prison. So I may have to farm up some of those. That's fine. Um, but I think everything else that we clutter the floors with, I mean, flathead mushrooms, we can grow those. Um, then the blackhead mushrooms, black caps, black hats, um, we can grow those. The bones we can craft, the paths we can craft. Yeah, I think we'll be good outside of the floor pours. And I think that's the main thing I'm going to have to farm up. Um, but anyways, we can go through now and start breaking some of this stuff off and replacing it with our mushrooms. And really, it's not going to take a lot, I don't think, to light this area up. Um, I can always throw in some extras, and then of course we'll need to light up the sails as well, um, but that's okay. Um, you can see in these corner bits, um, this little area here, that's how I ended up doing the corners. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. And um, then I've got corporeal crystal cubes. These, of course, aren't currently plugged up to anything, but I went ahead and slotted those. Now that I can make corporeal crystal uh, or corporeal sparks, um, I can make all of corporeal, or I can make corporeal sparks easily. I can make all of corporeal pretty easily at this point. Um, so I went ahead and just made these out, slotted these. These, of course, later on will hold um, specific monster items. So, for example, the Enderman pen, um, there's 12 sails in each floor and you can see I've got Weedwood signs here um, so we can slot our creatures. There's 12 sails on each floor and there's 12 respective crystal cubes for each respective sail, right? Um, now granted the mob duplicator one really won't have anything. I might have an extra crystal cube here I just use for looks but um, the other ones will be connected up basically say the blaze spawner room uh, in that case, there'll be a corporeal crystal cube here that has blaze rods in it. And whenever blaze rods fill up to a certain point, it's going to shut off the spawner. Um, is how we're going to be doing um, spawners. So we've got enough room for 60 different creatures. I think that's probably going to be enough, but we'll just have to play it by ear and see um, how things go before we really know for sure, I think. Um... I'm hoping that's enough though. I'm hoping so. But we shall see. But yeah, then I can just kind of go through and light these various areas up um, with our bulb cap mushrooms and uh, make everything look nice. Get rid of all these like torches just everywhere because nothing makes things look worse than torch spam. And a lot of times I put off lighting like longer than I really should. Like I'll be like, oh, well, I'll get around to it and then. You know, it takes me forever to get around to doing lighting, so I'm trying to stay on top of it. Of course, in this series, it's actually not too bad because the majority of our lighting is, uh, in fact, bulb cap mushrooms. So, or at least a, a, a big amount of it is bulb cap mushrooms. So, I'll put one there, I think. And, yeah. And then I just have to light up the sails and then do the other floors, right? But uh, I think with the addition of our um, little bulb cap mushroom farm um, I think it's gonna make our lives a whole lot easier because now I don't have to I've actually had to go out and find a couple of those little um, bulb cap areas but uh, this makes it a whole lot easier one thing I do need to add is uh, if you look at bulb caps uh, you can make the bulb cap mushroom caps, but you cannot make the stalks. I need to put a recipe in for the stalks. Um, maybe two makes two or something, you know, like that. Um, or bulb cap mushroom caps make a stalk. 
yeah, I'll probably do that because we don't need them, of course, for our current builds. But uh, I know there's, uh, let's see, Zephyr, I believe it was, was needing them for uh, a build that he was working on. And I know we're going to be using some of the full-grown bulbcap mushrooms um, in a later build that I have planned. So we're going to have to, I'm going to have to add in the recipe for that. Um, I love the light range on this. It's so great. Like they just cover so much area fairly easily. Yeah, there we go. I'm now out of bulk cap mushrooms. <laughs> but as you can see, I mean, it's not going to take me too long to farm up um, what I need for that. So. Even if our farm is manual, that's actually not too bad. Um, but we may... Oof. We may eventually automate that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we shall see. And I've been meaning to, before World Upload comes out, I want to, that little desk that's in the, like, the prison entrance there, I want to make a little, like, register. So it'll be, like, floor one, floor two, and, and all the different creatures. Um, I guess I'm going to do it, like, floor one is where you enter, floor two is the one above it, B1, B2, B3 are the other three. I guess that's how I'm going to order out the rooms, I think. I have run out of compost on these a couple times, but they grow a lot before they run out of compost. So it's actually not too bad. Let's go ahead. There's a stack of bones. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, a couple stacks or a few stacks of path blocks. Um, and I think that get our bulb cap mushrooms. Like I said, I'm gonna have to go farm floral pores. Um, I'm really dreading that, actually. I'm bad about forgetting to grab them every time I see them, and so I really don't have a ton of them, and I need, actually, a lot of them. <sighs> Skeleton skulls, but those aren't, I don't need a ton of those. Um, but yeah, so I've just got to start basically populating out um, the floor through here, on each floor. And then... That's probably going to take me a fair few hours, especially if I have to go farm floor pores, and then I've got to do this wall here. Um, but I think with the bulb cap farm going, I don't think it's actually going to be that bad to finish out that, because that was the biggest concern. And then I've got to make a bunch of bronze chains, but I've got bronze blend automated. And um, I really need to get bronze ingots automated. I may actually go ahead and do that before I push on for the chains. Because really this bronze blend is just for crafting our, um, our thingamajigs. <laughs> Whatever they're called. There's the crafting crate for that, by the way. And it's just basically toggled redstone that feeds the crafty crate. And a 2x2 two two recipe keeping three tin, or one tin and three copper dust in there at a time. So um, instead of making bronze and sag milling it down, we're just doing it that way. Um, oh, by the way, this is feeding a lot more energetic alloy than what we're doing redstone. Um, and that's because, you know, we need like four blocks of this at a time for sparks. That's the main thing that we're using it for, so that's what I am building it based on, um, is that. Oh yeah, and uh, I want to show you this. So the compost has ran out on this purified swamp grass. So what we'll do then is just hit that with some more compost. And that's going to get it back growing and spreading more mushrooms. So basically anytime you pop up here and that's out, then you just throw some compost in there and get it running again. Um, but yeah, I think once we have this spread out, because this is all going to be filled out with plots, right? All of this is. Um, and so once I fill all that out and we have like a lot of little plots growing, um, we'll be able to turn over, I think, a lot of plants at once. And then this swamp rate will just build up. I am going to put a little slot, uh, like an input node, um, over here feeding into a drawer so we can kind of stock it up. And then we'll probably make some more composters. I've only got one right now, but 
Probably make a few more composters. I really don't think it's something that we'll need to have automated necessarily. Um, okay, yeah. Um, actually, this should be fast enough for us because... Okay, one, one swamp raid will make one compost. But two swamp raids will also make one compost. Um, basically, it works on a value range. Um, I don't know that I've ever even looked up the specifics on that. I, I just throw stuff in the compost bin and make compost. Um, <laughs> but basically, um, the value range is like, it's 25 per piece of compost. Um, and so Swamp Raid has a value of 3. Um, so in the case of something like Swamp Raid, you're better off just doing 1 per compost bin at a time. Um, which does mean it's going to be, per compost bin, 4 minutes and 10 seconds per piece of compost. Um, but if you have something like, say, dry bark, then you're going to be better off, um, since it has a value of 30, then you're going to be better off trying to do, like, 5 in there. And that way you'll end up with 6 compost, because that extra will carry over. But something that has less value, um, like this, hollow logs are going to be 1 to 1. Um, rotten bark is going to be one to one. Sundo, you're going to be running at a loss if you do any over. Um, it's not bad if you have like a lot of swamp raid coming in because you can throw in a whole bunch in there at once and break it all down at the same time. But when we're not producing a ton of swamp raid, we're actually better off doing one to one. Um, so we're going to need just a bunch of compost bins. I was going to have to look the specifics up on that anyway is here soon because that's one of those things I've always been kind of like, eh, whatever. I'm just going to throw a bunch of stuff in there. And, um, you can throw in different types of items too. So you can throw in like some swamp rain, some swamp kelp, and some sundew, and some dry bark. You, know, you can mix and match. But um, yeah, so that's the specifics on that. Mega derp. Mega derp. But yeah. So, anyways, our prison is coming along bit by bit. I just want to get all the torches cleaned up, get the floors sorted out, get the chains hanging down, and all that fun stuff. Really kind of make the interior look a lot better. I mean, looking at it, I think once the torches are gone, I think it's going to look pretty nice. And then, especially probably once we have shaders on, I think it's going to look really, really good. Um, we're going to have to try that out for the world, for the world tour, uh, for the base tour. But yeah, this has been like the main focus this week. Has really just been slamming away on this place. <laughs> um, it's been whew, it's been draining to be honest. Uh, mainly getting all the sails built was extreme. I mean, because no joke, I spent like twelve hours one day, twelve hours working on that, and I was just by the end of it, I was just like, I'm ready to be done. Like pretty much shortly after I woke up till I was about ready for bed, you know, working on prison sales so <laughs> but that was honestly i think the worst part of it um was that and ugh, that's done now so decorating this actually won't take that long once i have uh the floor pours so i'm probably going to wait until i have the floor pours that way i can do it all at once minus any statues skeleton i'll probably grab all the skeleton heads i have i might even run, end up running skeletons through our mob duplicator during that time just to get more skeleton heads because um, otherwise I'm probably going to run out. I may throw some other heads in there too. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, it's been a little bit. A few hours. Um, you can see that I have expanded this out. I went ahead and decided I was just going to go ahead and clean all this up. Make it look better. Make it look nice in here. And um, that way it's kind of cleaned up and doesn't look so grungy <laughs> with just like stone everywhere so i did get our 16 plots of purified dirt laid out um, i think 16 is going to be plenty um the dirt that we initially purified i think that's going to be plenty for us um and i will say that this i still have to do little tiles down through here i think is what i want to do um for this area but um i will say that this is going to be plenty fast for our names you can see i've got 49 swamp raid 44 compost in here at the moment and all of these um, should have compost also actually i'll just leave these open that means there's nothing in them i'll have to add um, i went ahead and i've got eight composters here 
which is plenty. Um, doing it one to one like that is going to be fine for us. If I was doing, you know, trying to hit the 25 and go over that, it would, it wouldn't it would be enough. But doing one to one on all this, it's more than enough swamp read realistically. Uh, doing it that way. So, um, but yeah, most of these are growing bulb cap mushrooms. I actually need to harvest. I've been stockpiling these just kind of while I was up here working. And um, when you have a plot this big, they actually grow extremely fast. So, uh, there we go. And then I've also got some volar pads here um, as well. And then I have weedwood bushes. There's another volar pad. <laughs> and then I've got weaving blues and sundews here. Um, but this will cover pretty much all of our plant needs for like the basic between lands plants. Um, the only thing that we can't grow here, I don't have a place set up for, um, for water based plants. We'll get something set up for those before too long. And then I just got to go around and recompost in a couple spots here. Um, actually I think it was just that one that ran out. See, they go for ever like on compost they really do so yeah but I think this looks a bit better I threw up some hanger plants some stalactites and added this little weedwood bush um, little border here um, probably spruce it up a little bit more I do want to add a statue in here um, I've got to go through my list of statues I've got quite a few statues to add before the base tour in the world download um, a good handful of those so I'm gonna get some added um, oh this is this needs to go I think that's the only torch that's in here I'm trying to get rid of torches if you can't tell I'm trying to just <laughs> get rid of all of them ASAP but uh, but yeah so I hope you guys like this little area I think it looks better than it did and it's just kind of like a little garden area opposite the alchemist guild where they kind of you know they grow their crops and 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 herbs and things like that over here so of course only between lands crops but you can literally like hang out in here and just it just grows so quick it really does um the only thing is when it comes to this plot you actually have to pull up the weedwood bush to recompost um unless you can click on i'm not sure you might be able to remove this block and click on the side of the grass block but I'm not sure. Um, I've just been pulling up the weedwood bush, recomposting, and then placing it back down. So, but yeah. So I think I'm gonna end out this episode here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it wasn't standard progression um, for the pack or anything really related directly to the pack, but it's related to our playthrough and fun with between lands this episode. So, anyways, uh, if you guys enjoyed it. Be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. Next episode will be um, pack progression. We're going to be doing, we're going to be finishing out our current work on automation stuff, um, you know, for actual progression -y type things. And then the following episode will be base tour. Unless something happens, you know, it's going to be base tour and server. Uh, or world upload so stay tuned for that um, i'm gonna try to get a couple things crafted get sparks autumn fully automated uh between this episode and the next i think as well as maybe a couple other things i need to get blaze mesh automated um but yeah but yeah so that stuff's all pretty easy i think at this point um and yeah so i hope to see you guys next time until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.